This is Jets FM on EOFN. The Jets lose another game. That means it's 2020. But uh, anyway, uh, the score doesn't matter. I think we've said that. It's been a few weeks since we've actually said that. But yeah, uh, I'm not sure we've ever. I don't even know if we've, we've mentioned the score this season on any of these games, to tell you the truth. I don't think it's been worth mentioning the scores, Jan. Uh, but uh I don't know. Uh, you know, the Jets lost the game because they should have lost the game. They were way over talented. I thought it was interesting that Geo on Boomer and Geo, you know, they're they're just as much uh, to blame. You know, they've kind of gone all in on Adam Gase uh, because I guess Joe Benigno's on the building, so he has sort of convinced them that it's all Adam Gase's fault. So you know, they piled on, they piled on, and I thought I thought it was interesting. Because I was listening to them this morning, and it, they asked this question. I think it was a perfectly good question, and you can answer the question as well. How many Jet starters would start on the Chiefs? Oh, wow. Um, that's a great question. I'm not sure if there are any. Come on. Uh, cl- clearly not a quarterback. Clearly not a running back. Should be just one uh, or two, maybe. Quinn and Williams, maybe? Yeah. Quinn and Williams. You know, Marcus May might. Um, Marcus May maybe. maybe. And Becton maybe. You know, it all depends. I mean, not at left tackle, maybe, maybe right tackle. So, right. Um, but here's the point. And, and see, I, I find this interesting because I, don't, because I know they don't know when they say this, when they say these sort of things, what they're actually saying. The Jets don't have talent. That's what I've been saying the entire season. They're not talented. So I find it interesting that they want to keep blaming the head coach of everything. You just admitted it, that the coach doesn't have what, one more, one or two players out of 22 that would start on the team. And so you're going to blame the coach every week? Come on. I mean, it's just, just that, that is just such a like zing, target, slam dunk in your face why you can't blame everything on the head coach. So... Uh, and, and, and yes, this is about the future and I'm happy. I think now that we're starting to see some of these younger players get some playing time because some of them are, are playing well. Uh, some of them like Ash and Davis obviously have a long way to go. Uh, but one draft so far, and, uh, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm pretty satisfied with what we've seen so far. We have eight more games to go. We, we, we want to get these kids as much uh, playing time, obviously, as we can get. So I will counter your argument to a certain extent. I agree with you that the talent base is not rife. Let's put it that way. We have big questions in terms of the talent base, right? And you can, obviously that stems back from the GMs. Part of that, I would say Douglas is mildly involved with because he did go through free agency this year. He did have the ability to bring in talent, which obviously it's very questionable in terms of the talent we've brought in, even though the offensive line has been substantively rebuilt. Um, we still think that there's a lot of room for growth in the offensive line, but I, but so but notwithstanding that, good coaches help to create schemes to maximize whatever talent that's there. Not saying they were going to beat Kansas City by any stretch of the imagination. Look, the only thing you and I talked about is whether or not they would be able to beat the spread. But that was what everybody talked about. No, nothing along the lines of hey, the Jets could spring an upset. None of us thought that. Rightfully so. It was more so hey, the spread's twenty or twenty-one. Could they beat the spread? And I would not say that anybody had a particularly good game yesterday at all, despite the talent differential between the two of them. And part of that is, is is, look, you can, I'm not piling on Gase, but part of the job of the head coach or the coordinators is to try to figure out a scheme to utilize whatever talent you have to maximize. And if your viewpoint is, is that nine points yesterday was the maximum they could get out of that talent, then that's pretty much a damning indictment of the lack of talent around them, which I think we all have. But well, again, they're still missing their top the two, coaches, top the two receivers. are doing though. a particularly great job. But they're still missing their top two well, receivers. Uh, well, I agree. Perriman got hurt right, literally the last minute against Buffalo the week before. No, I'm talking this week. I mean, um, well, yeah, Perriman missed the game. Right? And Crowder. So we're talking and Crowder about two, missed the game, top right? two And given, yeah. the way, given the way Herndon's look, he clearly has his – well, to me, oh, that's – that's another that, – okay, well, that, look, let's put that, that on the is, side because that's another thing. Yeah, we're not going to get into well, Herndon in a second. But yeah, the, but that, the two receivers. Partly yes. in terms of the the lack of growth that we've seen within whoever is on this team is really what's troubling as well. Okay. Do you think Darnold mean? looks better than he did last year? Yeah, but I, I, again, it's how, how, what do, how do we know that that's Darnold or not? 
I mean, I don't, I right now, I, I, I'm not gonna. I just here's the reason why. And we we mentioned this before. Uh, everybody, GM, head coach, owner, all the you know before the season began, you remember. Oh, it's um, it's amazing how much better Sam Darnold looks. He, he, you know, the second year in the offense, he looks so much more in command. He makes quicker decisions, blah, blah, blah. That's what we heard uh, throughout a few weeks of their preseason. How much better Sam Darnold look? That's the job of the coach. And the player looked better in, in during the practices. It's up to then the player in the games. The lights are on. You got to make the plays the way you did in practice. Darnold's not doing it. So if Darnold was looking like, I don't know, he's not getting it. I can't teach this kid. He's not getting it in practice. He's not getting it on the field. I'd be a little bit more inclined to say, well, I don't know. It could be Darnold, but you know, maybe the coaching is just not, it's not working. Something's not right. But when the kid looks good in practice and he can't translate it to the field, I blame that on the player. And not all uh, because, again, the talent. I'm not, I, I can't completely trash Darnold because, again, it's amazing that Jeff Smith, okay, the first drive of the game, Jeff Smith gets the ball, uh, four passes thrown to him in the first drive of the game. Jeff Smith. Am I saying his name right? Because I don't even know who he is. Jeff Smith, four passes thrown to him, one incomplete. No, one complete. Two was incomplete. Uh, one was a total miscommunication and the other, uh, he got pass interference on him. He had a total of eight targets for three catches in the game. Jeff Smith. Now that is Darnold because when you call plays, you call plays. Normally it's about two or three different receivers. You got to decide which one to go to. It's up to Darnold when he sees the defense, who he thinks is the best option for some freaking reason. The combination of is Sam Darnold. Deciding Jeff Smith's the answer, which I think is a bad answer, or is it so bad that he has nothing else to go to that he has to keep going to Jeff Smith? So either way, it's not good. I and I don't have the answer which one it is. I know. It's very Tough. feasible. It could be more the latter than the former. And he may have been the guy that had the better matchup and was quote unquote open compared to the other guys, as you mentioned. They are missing their top two wide receivers. Mims, Mims came back. Supposedly, I think Gay said, well, they were looking to go to him in the second half, but they they made adjustments, which is ironic because every time we hear things have changed in the second half, it's the other team has made adjusting adjustments and we somehow have not. Oh, but, but again, you know, the, the talent, I think this week's adjustments were different from last week's last week's. We went over it. It was all Sam Darnold. It was terrible. Uh, this week, yep. I just think it was talent. And if you're Kansas City, I'm not sure exactly why you wouldn't shut Denzel Mims out to begin with, but maybe they just, okay, you know, we're not going to beat this team anyway. Let's just see what we have to deal with here. Oh, he's clearly the best guy on the field that we have to worry about. Let's take him out and let's see if they can beat us with Jeff Smith and Braxton Berrios. Uh, and if that's what they did, then that's what they should have done in the first place, because that's not going to win us football games. Uh, I also thought it was interesting that Braxton Berrios led the team with eight receptions or 34 yards for a 4.3 average. That's running back average. That you almost can't make that up. That's terrible. Yeah. So that's just, again, that's why I can't complain. And, and see, Darnold didn't have one of those days where he made a bad play and then everything went downhill. He made a few plays that weren't great, but he made a few plays that were. It was just uh, was one of those games where, I don't think Darnold played great. I don't think he played bad. I look at more of the talent he had to work with. I just think it was, okay, it's just another week. Kind of a wasted week. I don't think we learned anything from Sam Darnold, good or bad. Although I think in general, we've all kind of reached the point that if they do end up with the number one pick, regardless <laughs> that's a, of the second half of the season, baby. it's a slam dunk. Assuming yes. he comes out. He's coming out. Especially you look at that five-star quarterback that's ready to take over for Clemson. Make room. Uh, that's I another guy. That's He's supposed he to be out. the next Trevor Lawrence. All I said, assuming he comes out, right? We, we've seen before. We've been I down know, this road but he'll before. Be I'm not going to. That's why, you know, you're going to you're bring again, it if, up if, and I'll if, talk about if, it. But I don't, I'm not even going to talk about it. But if Douglas doesn't put the talent around him, it's not going to matter that he's here. That's what Joe Douglas is here for.
That's what you have to hope, and that's all it is. That's what we, that's what we have to do. We have to hope. Not not rip Joe Douglas apart like some fans want to rip apart just for the sake of ripping apart. Uh, so and, and he, he accumulates it. And I, how can you not love the trade of of getting a fifth round draft pick for Williamson? I mean, seven. that was awesome. You're you're moving up, so they are parting with seven ra- seventh rounders also in these trades. Yeah, well, nobody cares about a 2022 seventh round. Well, it depends on where you are in the seventh round and where the team is drafting in the fifth round. If the team drafts at the end of the you fifth don't think, round, you don't think that was a draft- great trade? I'm not gonna argue. Let me just finish this. If you if you acquire a pick in the fifth round, that's at the end of the fifth round, and you've given up a seventh rounder, and you have a pick at the top of the seventh round. In essence, all you've done is you've moved up a round as opposed well, to acquiring not, yeah, an extra obviously, pick. Yeah, obviously, you're talking about... Right? So, that, so that's my point is, I like the trade. I would be happier if we weren't parting with seventh rounders while we make those well, trades as well. Look, that's, 20, because it's, that, that, that's, seen, that's glass is half empty you could, talk. That's what that is. There is, talent you, there is talent you can get in the seventh round. Of course there is. But we got a fifth round draft pick instead. Fine. Look, you got it. You got you got a guy who's on an expiring contract, and you moved up in the draft. That is basically what you're doing right now. Is you're moving and that assets is a positive. to acquire more picks. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay, that. fine. That's it. We don't have to talk about late seventh, early seventh, late fifth. Uh, moved uh, up uh, one there's, spot. There's really didn't matter equation. much. Look, I, I'm not saying it's the panacea. There's equations, right? I, I said I would be happier if you weren't giving up the pick. I think that would make the trade look even better rather than doing so, exchange. It's, it's of always picks, you got to be happy, which is what, yes. which is what Douglas has been doing in all these trades. It's not like he's acquiring extra pick; he's he's uh, moving up a round or so in and, the, and that's in the draft. Great. Is what he's doing, and I love the fact that he's doing it with players who aren't going to be on the team anyway. So, right. all positives because you're not going to get anything for Leighton Hewitt, which also uh, poses the ridiculousness of why this guy is on the field as much as he is. He's like the he's like the number one linebacker on the team. Yet you couldn't get anything for him, and you, and you, and and you're able to get a fifth round draft pick for Williamson. Like, uh, well, you seem to be playing Williamson Hewitt had than Williamson. W- Williamson had nine tackles yesterday and thirteen tackles the week before. Yeah, we all know Williamson's more, better than Hewitt. That's and, not even close. And he's got right. And he's got much more of a uh, of a pedigree. And, and meanwhile, history. Hewitt's the one that's getting the most playing time for our team. So, well, go figure. We also got Frank Gore getting the most playing time, still a running back. So let's not, you know, what that that also gets into the coaching staff. Uh, no, I I I haven't looked at it, and that's the, the bummer about doing shows on Monday. But I guarantee you, when we look at how many plays Pirine was on the field over Gore, I I'm 100 percent co- confident Pirine had more plays. Than Gore did not so maybe maybe sorry maybe the touches were equal between the two yeah and that's what's going to happen when you're getting destroyed you're not going to hand the ball off so the fact that he was on the field more that's all I care about and if they were in a close game of course P Ryan's going to get more carries and we're going to see that on Sunday by on Monday night by the way because the Patriots run defense is terrible and and I'm sorry but if we can. If we can make it a four quarter game against the Bills, we're going to make it a four quarter game next Monday night. So we're going to be able to establish the run game, and there will be no excuses if P. Ryan doesn't have you know, five or six more carries than Gore. They better. And I'm glad so Ty you- Johnson had a few carries too. But yeah, P. Ryan better have like 15 minimum to Gore's 10 minimum. Did you watch the Cowboys Eagles game last night? Unfortunately, yes. Okay, I did as well because I had some guys in my fantasy league. Yeah. That game was a nightmare to watch. Oh yeah, I am. Con- I am concerned. That, that was Mike McCarthy's that game, uh, team versus that, Doug that, Peterson. wasn't that, doing much better. That next Monday's game could rival that for bad TV. No, I, it's not going to be that bad, but it'll be bad. Uh, it. Have it's you not going to be anything because you're, you're, you're thinking team about so the way the that's... Jets played against the Chiefs. Do you think that? Do you think the Bills Jet game was worse than that? Come on, well, no. But I, I wouldn't well, say. Well, that's it was what good. we're going to see. We're going to see that's that more of the good. game we're going to see. We're not going to see the Jets Chiefs game. We're going to see the Jets and the Patriots, and we are not going to look worse. The Jet Denver game wasn't wasn't that bad. It was exciting. It was ugly in a ways because you had two bad teams, but it wasn't like the Cowboys and the Eagles. So, and that's Mike McCarthy, well, baby. The, the Eagles are in first place. Yes, they are a first place team. 
And Three, four, and one. Yeah, and, and you know what? Good time for our first clip because I, I did some research, and Joe Bidding know who has retired. Is he gone finally, or is he no. like going to retire at the end of the season? Friday. Friday. Okay, good. So when he retires, he can remember because he's been the most boisterous about uh, Adam Gase and how how bad Adam Gase is. And I guess he can scream to the rooftops about how bad Adam Gase is because, well, Joe Benigno knows a lot about head coaches. He knows what a good head coach is. He knows what a bad head coach is. So I decided, because I knew, I said this when, when we went over uh, last uh, couple of weeks and I had this tweet exchange with a bunch of people, a bunch of fans, uh, and it was McCarthy and Gase. And I was reminding them about how everybody back then wanted McCarthy over Gates, and remember they were saying, "No, not us." Well, I I decided, look, I got to find re- I, somewhere on video. People, I got to I, I know it was there. I just have to find the video the proof. So I found it, and here it was. You know, I was having fun on Twitter with some of these uh, Jet fans earlier this week about McCarthy. So I was pointing out, oh, so uh, all Jet fans that wanted Mike McCarthy over Adam Gates. Then I, we're looking at you now. Because you're so smart. You know what a great coach is like. You didn't want Gase. You wanted McCarthy. Enough. It's a no-brainer. Mike McCarthy. Let me say it again. Mike McCarthy. When there was the choice of McCarthy and Gase, 90% of you guys wanted McCarthy. It's just, it's a fact. Fact, fact, fact. And the guy is a freaking loser. They haven't done anything yet. Well, of course. All they've done That's why I'm yelling. is interview a bunch of guys. Right. I and know. it's become more frustrating because the guy that Joe wants, that I want, I heard G say he wants him. You're implying Even Fireman Ed wants everybody him. Everybody wants him. Right. The point is, is that you keep screaming about Gase like you know everything. And the people who were screaming for Gase that think like you know everything, look yourself in the mirror when you realize that you were the ones who thought that Mike McCarthy could be the answer. So don't. All right, so that pretty much was the proof I was looking for. And as Joe Bedingno again said, Mike McCarthy, Mike McCarthy, it's a no-brainer, quote. And you can see how the Cowboy fans appreciate Mike McCarthy. So uh, I I just, again, I hate having to feel like I'm an Adam Gase apologist because that's not what it is about. It's about trying to be real about what the team is all about, about the talent that they have. And and again, if he gets fired, he gets fired. I'm not going to complain about it. I'm not going to say you shouldn't have fired him. The thing I'm concerned with is, I, I because of the McCarthy situation, here's a guy that won a Super Bowl. It's not easy picking head coaches. We know that more than anybody, but we have picked good ones. You know, We've had a couple of good ones here. Bill Parcells, definitely at the top. So we know good and bad and pathetic, um, but we don't, that, gar- that doesn't guarantee us anything. And we know Bay Enemy is going to be the hot prize, uh, but we don't even know if Eric Bay Enemy is any good because he's never been a head coach. He's not going to have Patrick Mahomes. So that is, that, that, I don't think that helps us out anyway. And then if we wind up, what, going to get, oh, maybe we'll hire Jim Schwartz or remember I said Herbiflus. I mean, you know, hopefully they do get a guy like, uh, the, you know, the defensive coordinator from San Francisco, but we don't know if they're going to get a, a coach that we feel confident about. It's a crapshoot. And if we get another bad coach, may, and again, you don't know, maybe he's actually worse than Gase because Gase hasn't been able to field the proper team to show whether he's a good coach or not. And if we get a coach that's worse than Gase, then we're right back where we started from and it's going to take us another two or three years. And then Joe Douglas will get fired for picking a bad coach. So this is a very important step. And I just don't think fans should just be clamoring for a new coach until you tell me exactly who that coach is going to be. I will agree with you to an extent. However, given what we've seen out of Gase, irrespective of the talent around him, I don't necessarily say that he's done a particularly good job. I and agree I'll, with you. You, 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 and you know that I did not want him here. No, I agree I with you. I agree with either, you either. But I didn't want Gase either. I don't think he's a particularly good coach in general. So while the question is bringing in the right coach, first and foremost. Does it make sense until then to keep going with a coach who you know is not a good coach and not take the chance of bringing in somebody who could be substantially better? Well, that's I don't thing. think Gaze is the guy to bring us to that next step. I don't think he was the right guy to begin with for this team. Well, but see, again, we have to look at it from their time. perspective, not ours. So let's look at it from their perspective. They're going to say, and this is what I, this is why I would, 
again, look, if 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 you if you told me who the next head coach was going to be, it would be easier for me to go, oh, okay, I, I got you know, look, great, let's go ahead and make that move. But not knowing, I think they are talking it probably the way I think most teams should talk about because they're around the they're they're the ones building the team together. Hey, you know, would be it would be nice to see if we can get these guys on the field together for four or five games. You know, our young players all playing together at once. And what happens if Crowder and Perryman do come back and Beckton's on the field for the last eight games of the season? And let's say they win two or three games. Well, I got to tell you right now, to me, with the talent that they have, that might be enough for them to say, well, look, maybe if we do give you better players, you'll show us that you are a, you're, you're capable of leading this team. I think if everybody's healthy, for several games against even the Patriots. I think if Perryman and Crowder play on Monday night and there were no other significant injuries, that's a game that Gates needs to prove that he can win because the Patriots are not playing good football. I don't disagree with you, but I also don't think that if they win two, three games the remainder of the season, that should be enough of a stay of an execution. I Look, it happened, if you remember correctly, with Rex Ryan years ago, and I was all on board, is... The um, you know, they had that run at the end of the season, which saved his job that year. And the next year, they fell apart. Same thing happened, kind of happened last year, right? They were horrible early on. They went six and two. A lot of the chatter was, well, he did a good job in the locker room. He kept them together. The team didn't fracture. They'll be improved this year. They went six and two down the stretch last year. I have not seen any stretches of the imagination looking like they did last year when they had that good second half. In my opinion, there's been regression the all over the place. But in the first half, <laughs> I know. The last year's second half, but we haven't been hit it yet. All over the place. So we'll find out. And, oh, and by the way, how's Josh McDaniels looking for the Patriots with the offense that he has? He doesn't look like a whiz kid anymore, does he? See what I'm saying? When you take talent away from a team, the the the, the brilliant minds—they don't look all too uh, brilliant anymore. That's why. Look at look at look at Brian Schottenheimer. Now, Brian Brian Schottenheimer, the whipping boy for the Jets fans back then he's terrible he's terrible oh look what's going on in seattle all they're doing they're so boring they're so predictable running the football that's schottenheimer's fault now they're an explosive offensive unit and why because schottenheimer has a quarterback that's great and a bunch of toys to play with that's it, it's just it's just normal when, when the coach that's why it's so hard to dif- to differentiate a really good coach from you know, a bad coach, it's talent a lot of the time. You know, sometimes coaches get free rides because they have really good talent and it's masking the fact that they're not really good coaches. But it's, sometimes it's the opposite. And when you got a coach that's only been here a year and a half, I just think it's, it's I, in my opinion, I just think it's just too soon. But again, if he, fi- he gets fired, I'm not going to go crazy and complaining. Um, as far as uh, some other key things, because we only got a couple more minutes, so... Uh, let's talk about a few things. Uh, Castillo's look good. What do you do with Castillo and Ficken at this point? Uh, let's see Ficken come back healthy, and then you can worry about it. Okay. So let's say Ficken was healthy, ready to go. I, I get the feeling that they'll play Ficken. Um, I think they will also. I, I, I Look, you're not really – it's kind of really, you know, lipstick on a pig, for lack of a better term, given the other issues. kickers are team. important. We're, we're, trying, we're rebuilding found, here. But, but they seem to have two of them who could be reasonable options. Ficken's younger too. Look, they can keep both of them. They just traded William, right? They can probably find a way to keep both of oh, them. Oh, yeah, he'll be here for the whole year. Yeah. I But I but I think Ficken gets a shot to retain his job. Yeah, I would agree. Based upon what he did the first half of the season. Yeah. And hopefully he'd have a really good second half of the season. I think Mims is going to be good. I like what I see out of Mims. I, I I hope so because as we've seen from the other receiving can the receiving other receivers who went before him in the draft or in that reasonable range. We see what Higgins is doing in in um in, in Cincinnati. We've seen what Claypool has done. So he's got a he's got a high bar to fill given the we look, we went into that draft knowing it was a very deep draft. We all also thought that we didn't do enough in terms of grabbing wide receivers in that draft to improve the talent base. The one they got, look, they traded down and got another pick. And they ended up going with Mims, who I think we all were happy with that slip there. Grant, granted, we have not seen a lot yet because he hasn't been on the field a lot yet. But you like him but so far. But there clearly is like talent him. there. But 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 I, I don't know if he's necessarily impressed me more than the other guys that have gone to say, oh, yeah, Coley, uh, he was the right guy. He's only been out there time. a couple of games. So again, you I like said, what you yeah, see I so far. Seen enough, 
I haven't seen enough yet to see whether or not he was the right guy based upon who else was available at that at that juncture. Okay, but do you like what you see so far? Yeah, yeah. That's all so I said. So far, I said I like what I see. There, there's definitely talent yeah. there. So that's good. But unfortunately, I'm, look, I'm also jaded given the history of second-round uh, wide receiver draft just, picks by the New York Jets. Nah. At this point, from what I've seen, the only thing that could hold him back will be injuries. That's it. He, and he's, we've seen that be, well, we've seen then, that be an issue yeah, also on this But that's team. something we cannot control. I agree. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, it was nice to see that they shut down Le'Veon Bell. Six carries, seven yards, shut him down on fourth down. And by the way, bless Austin, tried to take his knee off. You like that one? Honestly, it so doesn't matter to me. Dude, do you like want to pass that, on this show then? Everything is that? about does it what it doesn't matter to you, then what are we doing the show for? This no, is no, what no. we're talking about. Him, you don't want to talk about him, anything him, positive him. then. No, no. Again, do I look, it's nice that they stopped him. Clearly there'd been a lot of chatter. Right, I'm, the defense does have a certain amount of pride, and they're going to want to stop a guy who was on their team yeah, for and a it was while nice and it clearly was, had I mean, targeted. You didn't think game it was funny that Austin tried to take his knee ago. out? Well, I don't think anybody. I don't think it's funny that anybody tries to injure All another right. guy in general. Dude, you're you're having a bad day. No. Be, try to no, loosen up. I, I was just joking. Greg, Greg, I'm joking. Okay. My, but my but my loosen thing is up. Seen way too many. We've seen way too many issues like that in the uh, NFL where guys okay, try to fine. injure guys, and we've seen okay. what happens. Look, it's so it's, it's okay nice for Le'Veon Bell and Adams to no, just no, no. Uh, tell the organization no, I've, I've, they I've, suck and the players no, suck I'm and not. everybody sucks, and you just you just want them to get away with it. You don't want to say, no, okay, you want to see that we suck. I'm well, glad, we'll see you on the I'm, football field. Wait, wait. If t- does taking out their knee resolve what? Did they he get say? hurt? You didn't answer. Was my there question. a penalty? I asked you a question. No, it so wasn't. It wasn't a play like we saw. Did he get fined? No. It wasn't a findable look, play. What is it, what what looks like from a defensive perspective? Does it give them some bragging rights against the guy who clearly did not want to be here? Look, you. I've said this before. Both sides are 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 basically held up to the same standard to a certain extent. He didn't want to be here. I don't know if the Jets did. I don't want to get into this. With him. It's not important. But, but again, I was just making did, did a they, quick they, little they, snipe. That's it. Yes, you should have just stop? said, "Yeah, did that they... was that was funny." Okay, move on. Fine. Okay, fine. Moving I don't want next. to talk about Le'Veon Bell. I just think it, you know, because Adams, what's going to happen when we play Seattle, if they kill us, he's going to go back on social media and he's going to stick it back to us. And as fans, I am happy when I see things against these players that shit on the organization that we root for, that we at least, when we stink, can have a little bit of these little rewards. Uh, Because we have to take anything that we can get. And I'm glad when we can shove it back in their face. That's all. I have pride. Okay. I'm not disagreeing with you, but unfortunately, with the record we're at, pride goes out the window to a certain well, extent. Uh, that's look, all I got. All plus, right? as, wait, wait. As we, we've said, though, right, regardless of the record that the team has, right, you are being evaluated on every single snap, right? You and I have talked about that a lot. You need to have pride in yourself as an athlete because, to be honest with you, if you don't, it's going to show in your play and nobody else is going to take a chance on you. Even if you don't end up, even if you don't want to be here or don't end up here, if you want to keep a career in the NFL, you are evaluated on every single snap. And I I think the team has done a good job of that. You know, the players are playing hard. Look, nobody said they didn't play hard yesterday. They're out man talent wise. Do I think scheme helped to a certain extent? Yeah, but talent also helped drive the scheme. Look, we saw what happened. We talked about the Cowboy Eagle game yesterday. That was ugly, right? The quarterback there had no chance, but he kept trying. He kept trying to make plays, not successful for sure. But try to make plays. The Jets, I think, have more talent than the Cowboys do in certain instances. Not at the wide receiver right now, given all the injuries. But and also maybe maybe their offensive line's a little better because the Cowboys have basically four starters out. But you would like to see some creativity at times to try to mask the lack of talent around there. And that's what I haven't well, seen all again, the time this year. Let's get Crowder and Perryman and Mims on the field at the same time, and then I will be right there with you. Because once we finally get all those players together, then we can have a more realistic approach on, on, and critique on how the offense is going and who's playing well and who's not. Um, the other thing, quickly, Henry Anderson. This is, this is explained to me. Is there, has the lingo changed? Am I getting too old? Let's listen to this clip. Yeah, I mean, we're all pretty frustrated with – you know, the way things have gone and, you know, we just got to keep, keep our heads down and get back to work on Monday. And okay. Am I getting too old or is, is this just proof 
of how the Jets organization is basically backwards right now. Because according to Henry Anderson, you have to keep your heads down. No, I don't think you've gotten too old. I don't think the lingo has changed. Um, and you know what's funny is, is that, that on that, Jets I, F, on the on the Jets website they actually wrote the quote, which is why I noticed it. I'm like, what is that? Huh? I was it had to be a terminology thing because it can't be what I heard. So when I heard it, I was like, why didn't they, why did they put it in big bold quotes? That means the people who are running the Jets media department didn't get the fact that he just said something he should he, he he flipped it i'm sure he meant keep his head up and he said yep. down and for some stupid reason the jets media people went ahead and wrote it that to keep his head down i don't know who's I worse agree. i think it was the media people that were worse because i can forgive players for just you know the slip of the tongue i just yep. wanted to make sure it was um, a lingo again, thing I somebody missed. you probably should have somebody should have followed up and just confirmed what he yes. meant so I, I don't know who's worse but anyway quinn and williams did have another good game yeah, unfortunately, he got a little bit of a hamstring injury. Hopefully, he won't miss. But look, if there is a bright spot it. this year, he is the yep. bright spot. That That's pretty much it, in my opinion, right now. I mean, hopefully, Perrine over the next second half of the season is a bright spot yep. as well. But, you know, all the questions. And look, I was one of those also saying Williams did not have a great rookie year. He clearly has flipped that narrative a little bit this year and started to become and to look like the the, the guy that we thought we were getting sixth overall. Uh, bless Austin. Uh, got beat for a touchdown. But what I like about Austin is he's an excellent tackler. He's physical. Uh, I still think there's a promising future for Austin with this team. Well, you compare Austin and Desir, who got toasted on a fake punt yesterday, and Desir has not had a good year. So that's one of those acquisitions, I think, that goes in the negative column so far this yeah, season. Yeah, uh, Chiefs, a 20-point favorite with a fake punt. Okay. That's... That's nice that they feel like they have to f do a hey, fake punt in order to win a football game. It, it, it was early enough in the game where I don't have a problem. Uh -huh. with it. No, I'm just saying that's fine. You know, that's that's if I'm the Jets. Look, they're not going to play the Chiefs. Probably be like two or three years before they play the Chiefs again. Look, you remember that for down the road, and you hopefully take action yeah, at no, that point. In that's time. what I'm saying. It's going to be two or three years, though, maybe four years before they play the Although, Chiefs but, again. But Patrick Mahomes may still be there, for all you know. So who knows what's going to be around that team? And then Herndon. Have, have are you now where I was a few weeks ago? I I really wish I'd understand what the heck happened because look, I'll, I'll say this a couple of things. First of all, I think the lack of targets doesn't help, though he hasn't done enough, in my opinion, to warrant the extra targets. That's part one. Part two, I personally think this is a mental issue right now, not a physical Agreed. issue. I think he is so trying to do whatever he can, whenever he gets yep. the ball, because he's not getting the ball that often, that he's that he's running before he catches the ball, as opposed to looking at his hands, grabbing it, securing it, and then running with it. Now, again, part of that is psychological. Part of that, I think, can be helped on the practice field to just keep drilling it into him. And you know what? Get a drill and just keep going to him 8, 9, 10, 12, 15 straight times until he catches all of them and keep doing it until he catches all of them. And hopefully that'll kind of remediate this issue. Well, you know got. what's probably going on is he's probably looking fine in practice, but then you get him on the field. And look, I would hope too, that when everybody's healthy, then that will also open things up where he'll get some more options because there's no question. That's what's going but, on. I mean, they're still going to pay more attention to him than some of these other receivers the Jets have. So, yeah. I, I, but here's my thing also, right? Once he dropped it, the next play, I would have gone right uh, back to him again. Throw a t throw a tight throw a tight end screen. Throw a little three yard comeback hitch just to get him to catch the ball and and regain some level of yeah, confidence. And, and but you know part of that is the the the, the play calling and part of it's Darnold because Herndon is going to go out and he's going to go on patterns and Darnold has got to try to find a way to get him the ball again. But whatever, you know, it's just, it's a bad, it's it's just, yeah, I agree with you. It's, it's all in his head. He's just way too talented. Uh, but mm -hmm. we got eight games to go. So hopefully he'll have some time before the end of the year to end the year on a positive note. Cause that's all it ha all, that's all it needs. It, it can change quickly. He can have one big play in a couple of weeks and all of a sudden he can end the year in a, you know, in a, in a, in a nice, you know, few game stretch, like hopefully the rest of the offense, but we got to get healthy. So. That's the first thing.
And I hope we're healthy on yep, Monday agreed. night because, again, I, I honestly 100% believe we have a shot at winning this football game if we're healthy. The Patriots are playing awful football. Awful. Agreed. And, Edel- and, and Edelman's now, now also yeah. for them. So, look, they're still better. I'm not saying they're not. Oh, yeah, but yeah. they yeah. are vulnerable. But that, 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 that hurts their wide receiver talent. Then Neil Henry – is also dealing with concussion, and he yeah. may be out, right? So it could be Jacoby Myers, the battle and, of attrition. Attris- could be could be attrition versus attrition. And the thing is, the Patriots want to run the football. Our strength is run defense, and they can't stop and run. And we can run a little bit better than we can throw the ball right now. So look, I just want that's why I want the players healthy because if we have a healthy offense, I think we have a shot on Monday night, and uh, we'll be back on Tuesday to talk about it. Uh, fingers crossed that maybe this is it. Because uh, I still think the Jets will win a couple of games this year. That's the number I'm going to say. I still think that can give them the first pick. I'm going to say two wins. What do you okay. say? Um, I think that could be the case. You'll say two, two. Uh, that seems re. Think that. Think that. Think that seems. We'll say. Oh, look. If they're healthy, uh, that's that's predict- the caveat. If, if they're healthy, right. Well, again, let's let's see what happens. Yeah. If, if if they're if if they're not healthy, they're not going to win a game. Maybe. So. Uh, yeah. I mean, look, we, we had suck for Sam. Now it's tank for Trevor. So you know what? We're halfway there. <laughs> Not that any of us really thought we'd be necessarily at this point, but kind of here's where we are with ironically half the season. Yeah, I wonder already. if we win that. That's still, if we, if we win a game, we might still have the first pick. Uh, well, the giants are right there too, right now, even though they've won. So be who close. Knows? I mean, there's, there's a handful of teams that are pretty lousy. Imagine so. Jets giants first two picks could happen. Could could happen, and there's a lot of people predicting that uh, the kid Fields from o- Ohio State will go second, even though the Giants have Jones. Yeah. So big difference between Lawrence and Fields, but uh, still, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's a, that's a discussion for another day because Gettleman will get fired. We have at least we have at least eight weeks yeah. to worry about that, and that's another show. Okay, so yep. Jan, appreciate it as always. We'll talk again next Tuesday. It's on to Monday Night Football against the Patriots. Let's just hope uh, we don't embarrass ourselves again. God, I hope so.